So what message is Beijing sending really? Our Eunice Yoon is there covering the CEO summit where Cook appeared. She joins us now alongside Brian Sullivan, who has details on a newly announced multi-billion dollar investment in China by Saudi Aramco. Welcome to both of you. Eunice, let's start with you. And what are you hearing? Well, uh, Beijing wants, Kelly, uh, set CEOs to uh, make sure that they hear that uh, this country is dedicated to an open China. Uh, the uh, president, uh, President Xi Jinping's chief of staff, read a letter at the forum that was from his boss in effort to try to reassure the audience uh, that China really does welcome international business. Now, in public, the bosses of Apple, of Pfizer, of uh, Bridgewater, as well as um, others, had um, expressed their support for China's growth. In fact, uh, Tim Cook had uh, said at one of the side sessions that Apple and China have had a symbiotic kind of relationship. Also, Pfizer's Albert Burla uh, told me that the drug giant was aligned with China's Healthy 2030 initiative and would contribute as much as it could. Uh, the forum, though, couldn't escape the worries about the souring U.S.-China relationship. Uh, not only were uh, many fewer uh, U.S. CEOs here for the forum this year, but also the mood at the forum was very pessimistic. Kelly? Many fewer CEOs. So the fact that Tim Cook showed up is even a bigger deal. Why did most people stay home? Well, a lot of people decided to stay home because they were concerned about the geopolitical situation. Um, there were so many uh, people and companies that were saying to me that they just felt like it would be a really bad look. The optics would be terrible for D.C. when um, D.C. and Congress is holding a lot of hearings about U.S.-China relations. So that's one thing that's been on people's minds. Also, uh, the, the overall business climate is something that uh, a lot of companies are, are worrying about and seeing as a risk. You mentioned the Mintz Group. Um, they're not the only ones. A Japanese drug maker just in the past couple of days has said that one of its employees has also been detained, and they're working with the Japanese authorities to try to, to figure out exactly why uh, the Chinese authorities decided to take that person. So a lot of risk here and a lot of um, reassessment of what kind of relationship companies need to have with China. How do they spin it in or frame it, I guess I should say, when someone like Tim Cook shows up there? Um, how does who frame it? You mean the Chinese government? Yes, or the media, yes. Oh, oh yeah. No, everybody's playing it up here. Um, they've actually been comparing uh, the, the foreign ministry just a couple of uh, hours ago had actually put side-by-side -side photos of Tim Cook um, being greeted by people, shaking their hands, uh, whereas uh, Sho Chu, the TikTok CEO, is being, um, you know, from a Chinese perspective, um, unfairly uh, questioned by Congress. So the foreign ministry put out those two, two, two um, photos and said, um, and asked the question, which one is more friendly to foreign business? So um, they're definitely using uh, Tim Cook's visit here um, for mileage when it comes to uh, their propaganda campaign. Very, very interesting. Eunice, thanks. Our Eunice Yoon reporting. That's not all out of China today. Beijing also inking this big deal with Saudi Aramco to expand a refinery and supply more oil. Brian Sullivan is here with that. What's the angle to hear, you think, Brian? Money. I, I think that might be the angle. And the increased tie-up, Kelly, between you know Saudi Arabia and China. We know that the East is kind of coming together it's really kind of two deals that are both oil-related. Uh, uh, number one, you've got Aramco agreeing to spend a bunch of money and expand a refinery in China, also increasing their investment in a joint venture over a petrochemical plant. Because when you run the petrochemical plant, or at least have an ownership stake in it, you can ensure a flow of oil needed to do it. So a refinery over here, petrochemicals over here. Looking at the numbers, Kelly, some analysis says this could be more than one million barrels extra per day of oil from sold by Saudi Arabia into China. Of course, all this follows Xi Jinping's visit to the kingdom of Saudi Arabia in December. Now, ironically, this Aramco deal may hurt Russia. Russia had been, even still, China's biggest oil supplier. Previously, Saudi Arabia took that back. This should put them on over the top. So you do wonder, Kelly, if this will possibly increase a little bit of tension between Riyadh 
and Moscow. Time will tell, but China, Beijing and Riyadh certainly coming together on a big oil deal.